read a data table. So uh, <clears throat> oftentimes uh, it's kind of implied that, um, you know, when you look at a data table, you just automatically know how to read it, but it can actually be more nuanced than that. So what I want to do is kind of like start from the ground up. How are we going to interpret these data tables? So if you think about collecting data, usually there's some kind of uh, rectangular shape to it. Um, and this is what we call a matrix. But uh, the way to think about uh, data tables is that there's a set of observations and a set of variables. And as you're collecting data, you wanna kind of keep things organized. So for instance, let's say I have a student and, and uh, I'm trying to keep track of what their GPA is, what their internship credits are, whether or not they graduated in four years and what their time to graduation was. So I can fill this information in for this particular student and it would give me a, a kind of a useful way to organize information that I can build off of in the future. Um, and at a glance, I can kind of find the information I need by tracing across, I can follow a particular student and by tracing down, I can find a particular variable or property that belongs to that student. So um, <clears throat> as mentioned, there are kind of these different ways that we organize data. There's categorical like nominal and ordinal data. And then there's also the numerical which are the interval and ratio. And so what those variables are, are gonna be containing one of these types of measurements as you look at it. So let's say I wanted to add another student. I wanna add Beth to this list and I gather Beth's information. And so now I have Je Beth's GPA, their internship credits, their graduation status at four years and their time to graduation. So to add more students, I keep adding to the bottom. I kind of make a new, a new row for each student I have. And these are called observations. So each time you have an observation, you should be able to make a new row. And if instead I wanted to add a new variable for these students, like maybe I wanna see what their major was in addition to the information I have, then I would wanna add more columns. So columns are gonna contain the variables and they allow us to you know, grow the data sheet. And when I do this, uh, you can think about this as a matrix that's growing in two dimensions. Uh, one dimension is the number of observations I have, and the other dimension is the number of variables I have. So we can continue to fill this in. And when we say N, it means like the nth time. It's just kind of a placeholder to say that there can be a number of these individuals. Now let's say instead of just focusing on collecting data and adding to my sheet. Instead, I want to uh, calculate some numerical values. So usually what you do is you wanna identify what column contains the variable that you're interested in. And you can use that to, to do um, like a function, an algorithm, uh, a, an equation on that particular column. So let's say for instance, I wanna find what the average GPA is for this numerical variable. So being that it's a numerical variable, I should probably use a mean. And what I can do is summarize that column by an average. So now my GPA has an average of 3.2. So what about if instead I want to look at a categorical variable. So let's go over here and look at this column called uh, HIP participant. So we have Aaron was an HIP participant, Beth was not an HIP participant. How would we be able to figure out these values? So what I could do is go down the column and again, do some kind of algorithm. In this case, it's a simple count. I can count how many times I see people with HIP and I can count how many times I see people with non-HIP. 
And I can summarize this in a table. So in this case, I could count, oh, I have 20 students who took HIPs and three students who had none. Um, and I would display this as a bar chart, as column, column plot. In this case, you can see that the HIPs go all the way up to 20 and it shows a good scale and the non-HIPs are down at three. So what I've done is I've moved from a categorical variable, counted all of those, summarized it, and then displayed it as a data visual. And this is you know, pretty much the basis of, of what we're gonna be doing throughout this order. You have uh, data sheets, they're stored in usually a rectangular format. And from that rectangular format, you're trying to figure out which are the important variables that you want to use? How can you combine them into a summary? And then once that summary is made, how can you visualize it in a way that um, expresses the depth or proportions of, of your data? So what's next? Well, what if you wanted to use multiple variables? This is where um, Tableau and RStudio really come in handy because they allow you to manipulate the kind of conditions to look at more than one at a time. So let's imagine I want to combine these two variables. I want to see if GPA differed based upon HIP status, the HIP participants. So now I have a numerical variable and I have a categorical variable. So by combining those two, I'll be able to see if there's a difference in their GPA according to HIPs. Um, now, remember those little dot, dot, dots, those are ellipses. ellipses. They'll contain you know, more rows and they're extra students. So we're not just focusing on these two students. They're, there's imagine, let's imagine this list goes on and on. So if I were to summarize this, now I can create a new table that has that same average GPA, but now I can combine it with my categorical variables, the students who identify it as having HIPs, the students who identify it as non-participants in HIPs. And I can create this kind of nice smaller view um, that shows the GPA and uh, for both categories. And once I do that, now I can turn that into a bar plot, <clears throat> which is really useful because now I can see the proportions and which one's taller and make easy comparisons with my eyes. It's harder to do in a big table. <clears throat> All right, so any questions about that? That's kind of how we read data tables and it's going to be the basis by which we're importing data into Tableau. We're moving the variables uh, into the plot to create readouts. And then we're also summarizing through tables and things like that. 